Traveling Matt here and welcome to a video that I think is going to be rather different from a lot of the other videos I've made. So I am off on another pilgrimage. I am busy at the moment sitting in Ipswich Railway Station. There we are. Um, but this pilgrimage is quite different uh, to all the others. Uh, I would say, although I am going on a journey, I've been going on a journey since 10 o'clock this morning, um, it's more of an interior pilgrimage than an exterior one. And the place that I'm going to is a monastery. Uh, it's the Monastery of St. John the Baptist. It's an Orthodox monastery uh, in Essex, uh, not far from London. Um, and I'm actually going to be staying three nights in the monastery. Now, I've stayed in monasteries before, um, most recently in Camaldoli, uh, when I was on the um, pilgrimage uh, of St. Francis of Assisi. And I also stayed in monasteries uh, along the, uh, the Camino de Santiago. But I, they were stopping places on on the walk. Here, the monastery is the goal, and it's not a particularly ancient monastery. Um, of course, all the monasteries were um, destroyed in Britain um, in the um, in the 16th century, so all monasteries are reconstituted, as it were. But this one, of course, is an Orthodox one, um, and the Orthodox churches, although some might argue very ancient in Britain, it's also very new. Um, uh, and it's, it's dedicated to St. John the Baptist and uh, there was a holy man who lived there uh, St. Sophroni of Essex I don't know anything about him but I think he's the guy who founded it um, in the 20th century uh, and I've been recommended to come here by a chap called um, Scott White or Jurgis as he's known and he's also better known as Orthodox Gardener I'll put the link uh, in the description um, uh, on, on YouTube and he is a convert to it. He's an American, he's a convert to Orthodoxy and he's been to stay at St. John several times and recommends it thoroughly. What am I hoping to get from this? I guess the answer is I don't really know. But I've been drawn to the monastic life, I aren't saying as a permanent thing, but uh, as a concept for a long, long time now. Uh, I've been to a lot of ruined monasteries and active monasteries and I like the idea of the hermit life, particularly like the early Celtic saints lived. And I, I guess the immediate reason for going here is that I want to go and visit Athos. And it was Scott who said to me, look, before you visit Athos, go to an Orthodox monastery in your own country where they can explain what's happening, because then you will understand Athos far better. So in a way, it's like a preparation trip for Athos. But I think it is more than that. Um, recently, I've... Uh, been exploring lots of different ideas. One of them was past lives. Now, I'm still not convinced I believe in them, but um, I'm not convinced I don't either. Uh, and uh, the lady that I was talking to, Roseanne, she, who's got a bit of a sixth sense, she basically said, you know, my relationship with money and my relationship with wealth is very much connected to past lives where I was a monk and I'd taken... Uh, uh, vows of poverty um, and whether that's true or not I don't know but I want to explore it first and I wonder okay if that's something that I did in a past life or that is somewhere in my subconscious you know let's have an explore of that I also want to get the rhythm of a monastery and just see it as an experience and and where it will go from there I don't know it might not be for me and I may never do anything like this again it may be that I find it interesting and go on to um you know stay in a Catholic monastery or an Anglican monastery sometime um it may be that I really really like it and, and stay in more orthodox monasteries I don't know but I have looked at a number of pilgrimages now where monasteries and staying in monasteries is an element and so 
I think this might be an interesting route going forward. So last night, uh, my son and I, we, we watched the final episode of Game, Th Game of Thrones. Not as bad as everyone thought, everyone says, but uh, yeah, anyway, that was nice. And so I took him home, but the stone still started to fall and I couldn't get back. And I had to abandon my car about a mile or so from home and walk back through the thick, uh, snow. Uh, so I got back home very late, couldn't get hold of a taxi company to book a taxi in the morning. And so I woke up very early and I tried to get hold of people to take me to the station. Nobody was answering the phone. Um, taxi company still not answering. In the end, I managed to get an Uber for a ridiculous amount. So I did get to the railway station on time, and it's uh, a hell of a day to travel. I mean, it should be quite an easy one, because essentially all I'm doing is I'm going, you know, I'm just going down to London and then across. But there are train strikes today, as left are striking, including Avanti West Coast and London Northwestern trains. So, uh, a lot of the normal routes are out of the way and so I've had to go on cross country to Birmingham New Street and then all the way across to Peterborough where I should have changed onto an Anglia train but that was cancelled. So I went to Ely, got on an Anglia train there and now I'm in Ipswich and it's the final, the final leg. So I started at 10 o'clock and I will get there about 5 in the afternoon. But it's been a good time to reflect, to read and to write and um, I'm, I'm reading this book at the moment which is a very interesting book it's the first ever book written in the Catalan language so it's Ramon Yu I think it's Yu, Yu I don't know how you pronounce that I don't speak Catalan Romance of Evestan Blaquerna and it's it's a basically it is a story of a spiritual journey Blaquerna is the main character Evestan's dad he's only really a minor character in it and he, he wants, he's a, a young man, he wants to uh, become a hermit. But he sets off and he meets lots of characters on the way, very much like a pilgrimage story. Um, and then he, he becomes, a, they, they make him become a monk, and then he becomes an abbot, then he becomes a bishop, and then he becomes pope. And that's where I am now, he's pope at the moment. But I do know what happens, and basically in the end, he resigns the papacy and becomes the hermit. And the idea was he wasn't ready to be the hermit in the first place. He is at the end. Um, and that the hermit is seen as the ultimate holy uh, vocation, even more so than Pope. And um, it's quite interesting. It was a very impactful uh, book when it was written. At that time, no Pope had ever resigned. And soon after that book was written, there was a Pope who resigned to become a hermit. Was he influenced by it? And of course, there's only ever two Popes that have resigned their office, and the other was in my lifetime, Benedict. So uh, there we are. Anyway, so that's what I'm reading. Um, and I hope, I don't know how this is going to work, whether I'll give regular updates throughout the day, or whether I'll do one at the end of each day. I don't know. This is Uncle Travelling Matt from Ipswich Station on a route to the St. John the Baptist Monterey Monastery saying, keep travelling. So, Uncle Travelling Matt here. I have now checked into the monastery. It is about, I don't know, about 20 past 7. And what's happened so far? So, when I got to Kelverton, it was really, um, it was really difficult because um, Uber doesn't operate there. So, I couldn't get that. And every taxi company I rang um, wasn't answering or weren't working. So I went to the pub, had a pint, had a chat with the uh, landlord, and they recommended a taxi app, which they also couldn't provide taxis, but then he recommended a company in Wickham, and it was called Terry's Taxis, and Terry came out and he brought me here, which is brilliant because it would have been a really long walk, about six miles. So well done to Terry's Taxis, really friendly guy. Um, got here, like, everything was open and unlocked. Like There are no locks here. My door has no lock. It's, it's, I think it's the only place I've ever been like that. Um, but it was open, but nobody was about. Turns out they were all in a talk in the church, but the uh, the talks were finished. And I checked in with Father Bartholomew and uh, had a, he was a really nice guy actually. Had a chat with him about orthodoxy, about some of my like pilgrimages and some of my experiences with orthodoxy before. And he showed me the routine, the monastery. So basically, there's morning prayer and evening prayer every day. And then there are, like, set meals in the refectory. 
and the time in between is to do as I will. So I want to do some reading and some writing. The um, the refectory, I, I've just had my, my supper in the refectory. And it's a remarkable place. It's got frescoes all along the walls. If I, if I get a chance later, I'll make a video and put it put it in. Um, but and and it's just really powerful actually sitting there with a community of monks and nuns, and also some lay people, and sitting in that space and eating this meal. And uh, I I think you might I think I've said to people before I'm probably ADHD. You know I I I need stimulation all the time and i can't really cope with bare walls and that and it's brilliant because there's all these frescoes of saints and they've all got like scrolls with messages on and the messages in english so i can actually read them um and it, it's strange because i've been to so many monasteries and i've read a lot about monastic life but i've never actually really partaken in it as a living tradition so <clears throat> even when i went and stayed in camaldoli or the franciscan nunnery in was in the Meseta somewhere anyway carry on de los condes i think like the, the monks and the nuns keep themselves very separate and you see them in the church but that's it whereas here it's a living community that you interact with and what I think is very interesting is that there are monks and nuns, it's international, so they talk in English, but most of them aren't English. And they they interact together. And I remember reading about Saxon uh, monasteries and early Celtic monasteries that were male and female, and often there was an abbess uh, in charge of, of them. Uh, but of course the Catholics separate it all really, really strictly. Whereas here that doesn't seem to be the case. So there are these nuns and they're sat there having a, a chat with the monks. And I think that's really healthy. I think that's good. Um, so that was that. The the wonderful refectory just sitting there. A very simple food. Uh, it was all vegetarian apart from some fish. Probably because it's Sunday. So it's a bit of a celebration I guess. Um, and Oh yeah. And there was no drinks. And then this, this monk came with a big like pot uh, like metal pot and i said there was that tea and he says yeah and he said would you like some i said yeah and he says i'll get you a bowl and they drink from bowls not not cups um and uh yeah that was that it's i guess i'm i guess i'm just taking it in it, it's weird because it's quite a modern place but what i'm tapping into is a very ancient tradition and so I've been to so many places before, I can say they're ruined or they're there for tourists, but it's more like a museum. This is alive. And I just hope I just hope I get from it something from it. I have nothing to do now until seven o'clock in the morning. And people know me, I'm not really a morning person, but I'm gonna to go to bed early tonight. Um nothing to do, and that's prayers, and then there's breakfast after prayers, and then there's nothing to do until lunch, and then there's nothing to do until evening prayer, and then there's nothing to do until supper sort of thing. But I'm going to fill my time with reading, with writing, and I guess contemplation. So let's see how it goes. Um, couple of words before I go on. Oh yes, my room. Really nice. It's better than I thought it would. Apparently it's the bishop's room. Why they gave me the bishop's room, I don't know. I don't really look like a bishop, but... Uh, but yeah, it's really nice. And what's nice is there are icons everywhere. So I don't know, just having those icons everywhere gives stuff a special feeling. I find icons so powerful and it's great to have them in the room. The only thing is, I haven't got any candles. I love candles and I love incense. I do it every night at home, but I haven't got them here, so I can't do that. But I'll do the candles in the church. Anyway, that's that. I will give more reflections later, but at the end of day one, Uncle Chubbly Matt.